Welcome along to the League of 72 playoff debate. We've got people from all the clubs involved in the running in the race for the Premier League, along with the expert analysis and opinion of Don Goodman and Sam Parkin. Right, lads, let's let battle commence. We're going to start. Obviously, everyone here has got a wonderful opinion, in-depth opinion on their specific teams. Let's have a little check-in to start with. Lewis, I'm going to start with you from a Luton point of view. There's been a change of manager. Rob Edwards has seemingly picked up where the previous boss left off. Currently fourth. You must be very happy so far. Of course. I'm very happy Luton fan. Um, yeah, it's been a great year. Don't think we would be in those playoff places if Nathan Jones was still the manager. I think Rob Edwards has, you know, we've gone up a gear under him, playing more. The balls are a lot more on the on the pitch rather than up in the air uh, with Nathan Jones. But um, we still go direct at times, but we aren't playing much better, attractive football. And we're going to places like Sheffield United, Norwich and getting results, which is the main You don't thing. want Nathan Jones back then? Is that what you're saying? Uh, he's had his time now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was happy when he came back. now. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe as a different role, but not as coach or manager. Is, is, there, is there that much of a conscious change that you've seen on the pitch? Is that something that really stands out with regards to the way that both men attack a football match? Um, well, at the start of this season, we changed a little bit under Nathan. We wasn't as clinical when we were... Last year, we were playing a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But at the start of this year, we were so much direct. The ball was just constantly going to our two front men, Morris and Ali Bayo. Whereas now, Edwards has gone, right, OK, I don't mind you doing that, but let's do a little bit on the ground. And we're starting to see that. And you, you, the goal against Sheffield United was a prime example. Elijah doing a bit of skill out on the right and then crossing the ball into the box. And it was, it was, it's now starting to see great football. Is that obvious, Sam, when you see a change in manager, that change in the way that they're playing football? Because let's be honest, it's a style of football last season that got them to the semi-finals, isn't it? Yeah, I think, although a lot of people's clubs are sat around these, these uh, settees today have changed manager and, uh, and such like, I think there still has been- Let's <laughs> give your hand up. Continuity. Carl the Watford fan, by the way, everybody. <laughs> That's why I'm going to rile him up now. <laughs> the continuity within the system mm. is still essentially a 3-5-2 with those slight adjustments. So from that perspective, it looks like a really sensible appointment. Well, we've obviously started with Luton. I've got Watford here next to me as well. That sliding doors element of Rob being in charge there, what? It's painful. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, you could say, I mean, Yes, he had, by, by the very definition, he had time at Watford. It wasn't a long period of time. Are Watford in a different position if they stick with him? No, uh, quite honestly, no, I don't think we are. But the same can be said about Bilic as well. Would we be in a, in a different position? I think in terms of Rob Edwards, what he's picked up at Luton is a, is a, a team that's very organised. They know their jobs mm. um, and he's kind of just slotted in and, and just run with that. I'd be more interested to see what he does next season with them, mm. depending on where, where they finish. He, he was really struggling to get a winning formula going at, at Watford early on. He, he had a couple of good results, um, but week in and week out, you could just see that the, the players were starting to lose confidence with, with where he was putting people. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's cost him his job. Um, but that is an unusual at Watford. In terms of playoffs this season, do I think we'll go up? No, I don't. I think that um, Chris Wilder has got a job on his hands to get that team motivated in such a short time. And there's, it pains me, there's better, <laughs> there's better teams in the, in the running, um, you know, in terms of being a galvanised unit that are, that are going to push, push all the way to the final. You know, Middlesbrough, Luton, they're, they're, they're teams that are on form. Um, and we're really not at the moment. So, I mean, I mean given the teams that are sat round here and, and represented it, I'm intrigued from a, 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 an away fan's point of view. Are Luton afforded a bit of a luxury of staying below the radar? Are we seeing a team that can express themselves? Because even though, as I said, they got to the semi-finals last season, there is maybe a different expectation to a West Brom, to a Norwich, yeah. possibly. Yeah, right? I mean, I'd, I'd throw Millwall in mm. with that as well. I think the, the, the perception from from people is, oh, it's all right, Norwich and Watford will get in because mm. they're Norwich and Watford. And actually, th these guys will fall out because they haven't got that experience or, or maybe, as you said, maybe because they've gone slightly under the radar. I don't think that's necessarily true. I would probably argue that, that Millwall and Luton have been far better than certainly Norwich. You're, you're in a better position to, to comment about Watford. But that consistency and that relentlessness that you need in the championship, I think actually you almost have to drop the tags mm. and you have to drop the names of what they are and look at the teams on merit and um, there's certainly stronger teams and I certainly think Norwich and 
and we've heard there certainly um, Watford as well. But the bottom line is the um, when you go to a, to a game you know exactly how Millwall are going to set up, exactly how Luton Town are going to set up. We're still scratching around to what Norwich City are going to turn up any given week. Watford as well. Yes, we know they've got talented players, you know, especially you know, Watford's front players, but we don't actually know what the philosophy is. The thing that's coming out very early on in this, Dan, is everyone's been really nice about Millwall. Oh, I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deeply yeah. unsettling. Yeah, well, look, I think we've always had that reputation, no one likes us, but we had a chat earlier. I think people are starting to warm to us a little bit, maybe. And we're established in the Championship now, I think five years. We've been in the top ten for four of those. I think only once we finished low down in New Harris's last full season. And, and same with Luton. I mean, they was in the playoffs last season. They're there again, you know, on merit. I don't know which way less us and Luton, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, less Hollywood type clubs, you know, not like the favourable ones, you know, suits us, but um, obviously the bigger clubs you expect to get there, no disrespect boys, Norwich and Watford, always, you always think oh, they're going to be there or thereabouts, Norwich especially, I, I don't think you're the same team anymore that you were sort of two, three years ago in this division, yeah, yeah. would you agree with that? Completely, yeah, completely, and there's... It's, it's, speaking about Norwich City is a bit like opening a Pandora's box at the minute. There's so many different strands and, and reasons as to why that hasn't been the case this season. Probably the reason we talk about these clubs, clear system, recruit to that system and are very successful with it. Norwich City haven't had that. They haven't had, since Daniel Farker left, really a clear uh, identity, philosophy that they want to they wanna play to. They haven't recruited particularly well. They've made, in comparison to other clubs, pretty poor decisions. So I think it's it's a real mixture of facets as to why Norwich find themselves where they are. It feels a bit end of cycle as well, with a lot of players who, some of which have won two titles and been relegated twice. So feels like uh, there's not much wind in the sails, there's not much energy, probably around the whole place. I wouldn't just sort of put that on the, on the pitch either. Um, the goal of the Premier League for Norwich City fans isn't that attractive anymore. So it's, it's almost then you have to find a narrative to bring people with you, which is what David, David Wagner is trying to do at the moment. It's incredibly difficult. Hey Jim, it, it, was, it was a certain atmosphere, wasn't it, under Steve at the start of the season? Carlos comes in with the um, potential remit of getting them back into the Premier League. He gets a big chunk of time with them. He did a wonderful job with Huddersfield. Yeah. What do you see on the pitch now? What's the Carlos Corber on West Brom look like? Oh, he has revolutionised our playing style. I think we were next to bottom in his first game and we lost at home to Sheffield United. Went on this amazing run. That's kind of stuttered a little bit of late, but he's given them a clear playing identity and that notion that West Brom play in a certain way so that if players come in, mm. they'll obviously have been drilled on the training ground. They know exactly what the team plays like. We've got an identity on the pitch, very patient, build up, slow, a bit too slow for some <laughs> fans sometimes. But you can see you can see what they're trying to do. And generally, certainly at home, I mean, we've won, I think, 10 out of 11 at home. The home record is fantastic, even if the football hasn't always been thrilling. So there's clearly been buy-in as well at a human level. He's managed to persuade the players, this is the way we're going to play. What so, happens away from home to West Brom? I, I honestly have no idea, Don. <laughs> it, 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 sloppy moments. I mean, recently away at Cardiff, just one sloppy moment. Three mistakes in a build-up to a goal and a very poor team are able to gain a point mm. off us. So, and that's happened consistently away from home. But I do think as well, we're at that stage of the season where players are knackered. They do switch off. I think at home, maybe there's just that little bit of extra urging on from the home supporters. And even if the performances haven't been thrilling at home, we've done the job, but that's the stage. That's of the a refreshing change, isn't it? Because it was toxic under Steve Bruce yeah. in those final few games. And now he's gone in there and he's, he's got some buy-in from the fans. And yeah. That's, yeah. that's massively important. But yeah. I, I can't understand the difference in away form because when I played for West Brom at Chalvin, it's still the same case now. They're some of the best away fans. They go in their numbers. Mm. You always get back in as a player when you play for West Brom at Chalvin by a massive away following. And yet here they are, I think it's 20 points in 18 away games yeah. at this level for a club and a team like that with a quality, it's just, it's unfathomable really. Yeah, well it's, it's utterly lopsided, isn't it? Because the home form mm. is as good as the away form is, is right. mediocre. But I think, and touching on something that you mentioned earlier, you know, we've gone from Valerian Ishmael and a very kind of direct long ball style of football to Steve Bruce's football. I'm not quite exactly sure what Steve Bruce's style of football was, to Carlos Corbrand's football. and. 
I, I think the clubs who tend to thrive, as Luton have shown, as Millwall have shown, if you've got a clear vision behind the team, off the field, about what the club is, what it's about, where it's going, and a proper structure so that if managers come and go, as they tend to do, you've got something mm. underpinning it. And we haven't really had that stable structure at West Brom. It's an intriguing point you make with that consistency because there's a former Premier League winner here sat around the, uh, the sofa. He's keeping his counsel to himself because you look, you're in a position where you had Tony Mowbray for such a long period of time. He comes away from the football club. What you've seen on the pitch, because obviously everyone's looking at what a Yondal Thompson team looks like. And again, when you look at the players that are already there, the likes of Ben Berta Diaz, Sam Gallagher, Tyrese Dolan, Sammy Smoddix coming into things latterly during the course of the season. The makeup of the squad right now, good enough to A, cement a playoff place and B, navigate themselves through it? I think it's good to cement a place. It's getting through it that worries me. I think the two-legged game I don't think it suits us away from home. You know, West Brom have had the struggles away from home. We do. We can go some places and really outplay a team, outplay a team because I think we, we suit that counter-attacking. We suit a team coming and attacking us because we're going to their place and then hitting them on the counter. But it's whether we can actually get that goal, uh, get the goals at home and make enough of it. Because that's been the biggest issue, I think, of Rovers, that we can't put the ball in the net twice or three times in a game. We, we win 1-0 a lot. So if we're coming up against one of the better sides that you know, full of talent and are going to score goals against us, it worries me because we're yet to come from behind this season as well mm. to win a game which mm. you need in a playoff. If you go behind, you've got to have that fight to get back in the game and I think that's the one thing we're lacking at the moment. Are you, are you more confident now, having had the last six weeks or so when Brereton Diaz missed a bit of football and the goals started to get spread out and keeping clean sheets as well? Because you would have said that there was a, an over-reliance early in the season, wouldn't you? That's it. I think the spreading of the goals has been the massive thing for us. And I think that's the thing that seen us go from, we can contend for the playoffs to we'll actually get in them. I think it's that now it's not the Brereton Diaz show. It's not giving the ball all the time. It's, you know, if it doesn't work for him. Because teams start to work him out. They start to mark him. Two men on Diaz. And then, but it opens up that opportunity, especially Sammy Smadix. I think he's been incredible for us. I think he's really took that role that Bradley Dack did so well for so many years. I think Blackburn, I've been waiting, and I said when um, I covered their game, it was the best I've seen them play at home to Sheffield United. Yeah, they incredible were excellent. performance. And it was a cracking game of football. The, one it? of the yeah. first things I said uh, when, when they, the kickoff happened was, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Blackburn Rovers just to fall away. Because I hadn't really seen you play well. You know, I don't know whether I've been the jinx this season or no, whatever. But you I, hadn't, right. I hadn't seen you play well. And then that day, I, but, but before you played that day, I said, I'm now going to stop waiting because after 34, 35 games, you're not really there by accident. You're there because you deserve to be there because the table is settled. It's not like eight, ten games into a season. I still don't know what I'm... I'm expecting every time I turn up and watch Blackburn Rovers. <laughs> I know what I'm going to get when I watch Millwall. I know what I'm going to get when I watch Luton. I have no idea. <laughs> you and me both. Who's going to be in no charge? You and me both. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm I expecting have no you to idea. be appointed manager and I'm soon. Getting, I have no idea away from home, you see. So, so it, 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 Blackburn just fall into that category. And I've got to be honest with you, underneath Burnley, I think literally it is much of a muchness to a point. When I look at the league, the championship, when Norwich last won it. Norwich top, really good Norwich team. Sheffield United second under Chris Wilder, then went on to finish ninth in the Premier League the next season. Really good team. Leeds United under Bielsa were third. Aston Villa, or West Brom, I can't remember which way round it was, but Aston Villa under, um, was it Dean Smith? Dean Smith, Dean Smith think, yeah. and then obviously West Bromwich Albion, and then it was Frank Lampard's Derby, six. That, I'm telling you, that was six really good teams. Now, with respect to the championship and the quality of it now, I don't see that depth anymore, and that's to do with COVID, that's to do with parachute payments, that's to do with gross mismanagement from owners and people at the top. There's a lot of reasons, but I just don't see that quality. And actually, that makes it more exciting. That's the reason we've had loot and Definite once in the playoffs, possibly twice. That's the reason we've had Barnsley in the playoffs. That's the reason we've had Huddersfield Town in the playoffs. You, because there is, there is a real opportunity for somebody at, like a Luton, like a Millwall, to genuinely get to the Premier League this season. There's never been a better time. And that's why 
Watford, Norwich and West Bromwich Albion particularly have really disappointed me because I think the quality of the championship is probably as low as I've seen. Of course, another outlier that's not represented here on the sofa, and I discount my loan spell there a very long time ago, like most Coventry fans would, to be honest. Even though we got safe, it was great playing at Highfield six Highfield Road, yeah? No, no six no. fields at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the road. Um, thump, uh, coming off the back of Thumping Blackpool, a very good result for them. And Sam, uh, we've got the um, opinion of two strikers here, but Victor Jokovic. Oh. Yeah. I think that sound sums big yeah, yeah. up, doesn't it, it? Just how good he is. Well, if Burnley had, had got him in the summer, there'd have been another 10 points on the, the way to the horizon. Um, I, he's better than a lot of central strikers in the in the Premier League now. I think the majority of the bottom bottom half would, would take him and he'd, he'd get in their team pretty complete. What I've seen, strong, can run with it, run beyond. Um, he's a good creator as well. He's, um, he's made a number of good assists, so really like him. And I think the spine of that Coventry side is their, 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 their strong piece, really, with McFadden coming back in recently. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, um, I think Coventry's story this season, you know, where they, where they started mm. in terms of the pitch and everything that's gone with them is, uh, again, an incredible story to, to still be there. It's a, a real big one for them this season because if they do get into the playoffs, are they going to be able to keep hold of some of their, mm. their, their I think I think they were concerned about losing Gokarez and in O'Hare the, last January. summer. Yeah, as well. And yeah. they were what, six games in, eight games in maybe. And they, I don't know if they'd won by that, that point. The, the players, to me, looked like they were probably still a little bit in pre-season mode mm. because of the intro, in, introductions at the, the, the start of the season. So to turn things around so seemingly has been a, a, an amazing story. And like I said, a lot of people would have been tipping them to struggle this season. So the ascendancy has been incredible. And, and it relates into asking you, Dan, about Millwall, given the fact that we hear project transition, basically a manager needs time. Gary's had that and it's been incrementally an improvement, an improvement. Yeah. Flirting with the playoffs at the end of last season, very kind of involved in it, currently sixth in the championship. What's what's a Gary Row at Millwall look like to you? What you talk about, Don said about the depth of the squad and about the likability factor of what Millwall is. Yeah, we, we know don't, that we don't, don't want yeah. the likability factor. <laughs> it's but funny, it, yeah. Go on. Just listening to the other Dan say about Blackburn and well, losing one week, winning another. We got a reputation, especially amongst our own fan base, too many draws, too dull under Row it. But you, you can't knock what he's done. And he took over obviously from Neil Harris. He stepped away at the right time. And then we just found as well, like the West Brom thing with Bruce, Cobran, all these different types of managers. We found a perfect replacement in Rowett. And he hasn't set the world alight, but he's just, could, Harris went there and usually new manager comes in, you do this or what. Mm. He's just carried on from where Harris um, left off. A little bit less direct than Neil Harris. Much more structured, disciplined, everything you'd expect from, from a Millwall team really. And, at first, a lot of fans didn't really take to Rowley. They didn't think he understood the club. And, you know, at home games, we was accusing him of, of sitting too deep and, and too defensive and not going after teams. But um, he sort of, he's rectified that now. I expected us to all, well, I didn't expect to be sitting there, put it that way. Because I thought February was a big month. I think it was six games in 17 days. And just the, the fatigue, maybe the lack of striking um, opportunities. and Played the big got. teams and came through that, though. Yeah. I know, That's but then we lose to Huddersfield. I've got absolutely Neil Warnock, <laughs> didn't we, on Saturday? I wasn't going to mention that. Got <laughs> Neil Warnock. <laughs> and on, on, on paper, I was saying to some of the boys earlier downstairs, on paper, you know, people go, well, you've got Wigan, you've got Blackpool. You've got uh, these teams. And, but that's like saying to us, you've got Bayern Munich, you've got Barcelona. Because if a team comes to, and sits at Millwall, we, we never have a lot of possession. Teams, you know, we're, we're always out of possession and we count up. When we're in possession... Huddersfield didn't want to cross the halfway line on Saturday. We can't break teams down. Recently, we've seen Burnley and Sheffield United go there and drop points. Mm. And because they bring vociferous away supports, the Millwall fans go, right, this is a big <laughs> game today. They get in early. The opening 20 minutes is like nothing else you'll encounter in the championship, the decibel levels. And that raises the, the performance of the, the team. And last season and this season, you look at the, the amount of times they've scored early, scored first. I think they've won 15 out of 18 they've scored first in this mm. season. That's not a coincidence. Definitely this season, it's been, it's been Fleming's been the one. You know, he, he, he was, say, defensive, right? and he went out and we said, we need this number 10, but he would never do it. And he did, he went out, he bit the bullet and he got, he got the right player. You know, cause we, we ain't, I mean, I think it was 
one uh, one point six million, which is nothing. To, it's, it's, I'm not sure it was that much. One point four, maybe. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a, that's a, a record sign. It's mm. a lot of money for us. We ain't got money to, to waste, you know, to burn. And he's absolutely got the right player, and he's just, you know. F- f- and he was f- on their radar for yeah. quite some time as R- well. Rao apparently, Fleming said that Rowett kept coming back, kept from, coming kept back. in contact with him. Yeah. He scored thirteen goals now, and as well, he's assisting. Bradshaw scored fourteen. It's twenty-seven goals between. I think it's only, I think it's only the Middlesbrough duo that have. Um, Got more as a partnership. That's the only concern, isn't it? If because he's been nursing Bradshaw through the yeah, last. Yeah, now he's going to got. A, uh, yeah. Nearly swore they nearly got a Wells call up, and he's going to got a Wells call up now. We're like, no, oh no! I know <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I'm saying. No one's coming. No, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. The only striker we got. He scores scores fourteen goals. He gets a Wells call up for the first time in six years. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Talk, talking about goal scorers, there's one that's really lit up the championship, Connor, isn't there? And Timo Puki for Norwich um, over the last several seasons. Is it a last throw of the dice for that player in this particular set of players together? Is 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 change of foot regardless of whether they go up or not? Yeah, I think I think that's the conclusion that, that many Norwich fans have, have reached. And I think there's there's a degree of necessity about it as well. This this does look a tired group of players, and I don't mean physically, but I mean mentally. I think probably the scars of, of two really bad Premier League seasons have, have, have affected them. They've emotionally been through a lot, but I mean his contract expires in the summer. Um, there's it, it was very open in the fact he wanted to leave last summer. I mean, he's still got 10 goals, which in this Norwich side, for anyone that's watched him this year, and the lack of creativity is is remarkable. We, I think he's got eight assists, which probably shows how his role has changed a little bit, because I, I think he got nine in the first year they went up. So he has had to drop deeper and go wider and, and, and probably be a bit more involved in the build-up than he has in, in previous years. Um, but yeah, you, you, Timmy Puki, Kenny McLean, I, I suppose Grant Hanley, Tim Krull, all players who... Mm. Um, you know, won two championship titles and won two championship titles very, very well. Um, and as a group that just look really sort of end of cycle is, is probably the best way to, to describe it. And, and with regards to change and, and Chris Wilder coming in, um, transition happens every few months. And I'm not saying that in, a, in, no, a, no, yeah, yeah. in, a, in any derogatory term. It's just a, a statement of fact. As a Watford fan, are, are you just used to now that model? No. Can you ever get used to it? No, I don't think you can. Um, look, we, we've we've had some great times under our, our owners and that that way of playing and that style uh, or, or running the football clubs worked for us. You know, we're Watford at the end of the day. We had six seasons in the Premier League. That's overachieving. doesn't matter what you say about it. It's I call it lucky. He calls it lucky, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it is. It's, over, it's overachieving. Um, we are, as somebody said earlier, we are a, a championship side, you know, in terms of fan base, size of the club. But it, it's kind of got to a crossroads now where this this constant change of management is, is now becoming a problem. And, it, and I said it earlier, it's really filtered, not just down into the players, it's filtered into the into the fan base. And it's something that we're generally not happy about anymore. But you've got two of the best players I've seen in the championship, yeah. not this season, by the way, in Ismail Assar and Joao Pedro. Then you've got Keenan Davis, who was an, a revelation yeah. driving Nottingham Forest yeah. to the Premier League last season. So is it a case of the coaches that have been at the club can't get the best out of these three? Or are these three unsettled because there's disruption of change in manager? Yeah. Or? I mean, Saar's a classic case in the sense of he's been left out the last two games as we, as we, we sit here. Um, he's just been dropped from the Senegal side as well. So he's a, he's a player that really is low on confidence. Um, you know, you, you've seen yourself what Saar can do. He, he can destroy yeah he is that cost 40 million pounds for nothing did yeah exactly exactly and 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 that's that's the biggest thing i think the championship can catch you out though you know really can catch you out because you 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 come in where you've premier league you've got a little bit more time maybe to 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 think about what you're going to do championship you're getting kicked into rose ed (laughs) as soon as you think about it um and he's not he's not really adapted this season the season during covid he cracked it, you know. He, he we, I just, I've never seen him this season take a game by the scruff of the neck and, and you know, drive with it. Um, and Keenan Davis, you mentioned there, he's a fantastic talent, and I, and I really rate him. Um, but he needs somebody up alongside him. You know, João Pedro, we mentioned him already today. Talented, really talented. He's gonna, gonna fifty million pound player easily mm-hmm. at some point. But Keenan Davis up by himself gets the ball to the floor, looks around, there's nobody there. You know, he, 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 there's only so many turns or you know, he's a big guy, he can hold the ball up, he can do all the things you want to do, but you need players bombing past him. 
And that's where Saar should come into his own. That's where João Pedro should be. And we've just not really ever developed a pattern of play or a style of play to be able to suit... Get the best. The best out of those players. Just from, to look at the clubs that you've seen, the teams that have rocked up at your respective stadium, I mean, do we put Burnley up there as the best team that you've all seen? Well, mm. I've got, I got to say Millwall. Home and away I went and they destroyed us both times. <laughs> Both times. Did the away game, they yeah. did destroy you. Destroyed us, yeah. yeah. The, the physicality, the organisation, um, they, they had everything. You know, and I, I, you mentioned Burnley, we beat Burnley this season. Mm. Um, and we should have beaten them at their place as well. We should have beat Burnley. We're really unlucky. The yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we played really well at their place, but they, you know, we played at the top of our game pretty much away at Burnley on the top of our form going into that game and at our very best. They still beat us, and that yeah, tells. We, we that's played the measure of after that five games, mm. and I thought they were phenomenal. The bit is two nil. It could have been a lot more. And I said that night, I said they'll win the league here. Well, they, they've had a lot of late goals as well, haven't they? I know it's obviously a win, but yeah, I've never been massively impressed by them. They just find a way to win for me, and if that gets you out the league, it gets you out the league. You don't have to be the best team to get out. The best team I've seen is Bristol City. Come to Ewood, I thought they were incredible. Uh, and then they went on that run where Pearson kind of come under pressure and now they, they were coming back and then they lose again. But, you know, Bristol City for me have been it's, by far the best you're, you're picking up results. T teams that get out of the Championship are teams that when they're not playing particularly well and they yeah. still get a result, you know, they still nick something, that last minute goal. And we've, been, we've been terrible lately. Three, three away games in a row, we, we've not got out of our half and we've won them. Even, how was we tuning up against you? I don't know how he's... I've got, I've got two words for that. The goalkeeper didn't help, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, that didn't help. But how was we tuning him up in, the, yeah, 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 that, yeah. <laughs> him up in that game? We could not get out of our off. We couldn't string any patterns of play together. We couldn't get out the pitch. So, you know, is it, is it written? Is it just... Are we a good side now? Because we're not playing well and we're finding a way to win. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to get consistency in the Championship, you know, because of the mm. Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. And... You know, Burnley, to be fair to them, and, and Sheffield United to a, to a point, have managed to do that. They've managed to, to grind out those results, and that's probably why they're there. I, Middlesbrough, for me, I've got a sneaky suspicion about Middlesbrough that they might push Sheffield United right to the end. Oh, uh, Borough, Borough will get top two. Yeah. I'm convinced I, I, of it. I just, I, just don't think, I just think the <laughs> no FA doubt. Cup, put money on the FA cup <laughs> might play a part. <laughs> yeah. I think the FA Cup semi final might play a part in this now. It's happened. I've, I've witnessed it as a, as a Watford fan. You just take your eye off the ball, and you, the, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Borough, Borough nick them. That's teams then. What who's who's a player that you've seen that's floated your boat? Who's excited you this season? Any any real standouts? Is there a collective it's be, agreement? Um, Akpom at the Tuba. Run, it? It's got to be. I told Don a story earlier that Jim Magilton had a brainwave my second year at Ipswich that I was going to play as a number ten. The experiment lasted 45 minutes <laughs> in a, in a pre-season game in Holland. And I said to, to Don, when you've been used to playing up against someone all your career, as Akpom has done, now to play in this withdrawn role, it takes a clever player to know when to play one and two touch, when to know that you've got to be the creative spark mm. and have a dribble, commit someone. So for, for Michael Carrick to recognise that and for him to produce with such consistency is amazing. And they come in, I, w I wouldn't go as far to say that. I think, I think Sheffield United's three-point cushion could be enough mm -hmm. right now. But I think Archer's probably the lone sign of the season alongside Teller going into the run-in. His relationship with Akpom... No? I was just, going to say Nakamba being the best lone sign. Well, said he. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just think at Akpom to play actually a different position. So, I mean, he come through at Arsenal, he's got unquestionable talent. But to do it... It, it, with such regularity is an incredible story and, and yeah that's why that momentum that that two in tandem in particular I think you you wouldn't swap those two for any other two in the championship and I go it's for a bit it's a bit it's a little bit like Tuber, Tuber Akpom this season I think the most goals he'd ever scored prior to this was six or seven something like that it's a little bit like what happened with Ben Broughton Diaz last year it's a little bit like what's happening with Carlton Morris this year he's never had double figures before no and all of a sudden, you've got to give the coaches credit for, 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 for picking these players up and turning them into goal scorers, really. They're building there's the team lots around of him, essentially, them. the attack around him. There's lots of, there's lots of been brilliant players, but that Sheffield United centre-half, Ahmed Hodzic, mm. I think he needs an honourable mention because he'll be in the Premier League next year, with or without Sheffield United. That dovetails into my final question to you all, which is, who are the three that go up? Dan, we'll start with you. 
Uh, obviously, Burnley title. <laughs> I think Middlesbrough will get uh, into second. The playoffs is it could be more for me. <laughs> I, I couldn't see Middlesbrough getting up through the playoffs if they do end up there. I think I'll go for Burnley, Middlesbrough, Sheffield United. I think Sheffield United's experience in the playoffs before, and I just think that experience of last year, we find that uh, with Brentford were in the playoffs, mm -hmm. lost to Fulham and then went up the year after. A few teams into it, so I'll go for them three: Burnley, Sheffield United, Middlesbrough. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna on the hop modify that slightly, Sam. Your top six end of the season. <laughs> oh, I think there's a massive game at the Hawthorns. Yeah. April the first. Sorry, mate. I think that could define the outcome for both those yeah. two sides. And I wanted to come here today with a bit of a curveball. And West Brom are still going to be mine. So that's yours, Dan. Your top six. My top six. Well, Coventry having a a little late run, aren't they? That's mine. Yeah, but obviously that would knock us out of the top six. So I'm going to say us. <laughs> um, I'm going to say as it is now, I think Sheffield United will, although Middlesbrough are doing well, I think they'll limp, especially those Man City low knees. And then I think that Middlesbrough are going to beat Luton in the playoff final. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a sentiment echo? Then? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Just the thought of them in the final is I'll shivering. Give, I'll, I can give you the scorers as well. Yeah, if you want yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I think um, with the playoffs, um, having been involved, you know, uh, quite a lot, um, it tends to be that team that are on form. You know, that, that, that come up and Coventry. I look at them and I, I wonder if they're they're going to have something in it. I'll put my hands up. Generally, don't think we'll make the playoffs. I'm sat here as a, as I agree. a fraud. Yeah, I don't. I just, yeah, I, I don't. I, you know, I'm 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 honest with with that. I think there's just been too too much going on outside of that for for Watford to be involved. Um, but the 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 Middlesbrough Sheffield United um, situation is, is a is a worrying one because I do think Middlesbrough might nick it off Sheffield United, and they might then struggle in the playoffs. They might then struggle. It's going to be a team that just gets in there and, and hits the form at the right time. And we're, we're banging that at the moment with the, with the amount of games left. If, if you say, on the one hand, you don't see Watford doing it, can, is, there, is there a world that exists when you can say, this mob here might do it in the playoffs? I can confirm we won't. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't say. I mean, we're, yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> as, as much as I love Luton. This it? lasts forever once you say it. Hey. Look. As an away day, you can't, it can't be a Premier League ground. It can't. I mean, look, I, I will say something, I will say something, and, I, and I'll go on the record of saying this, is yeah, th their story is incredible, what they've achieved in, in terms of where they've come from and where they are now. That's as far as it goes for me, <laughs> as far as it goes. But look, they've, they've done really well to be involved, um, but I think that's all they will be, is, is involved. Oh, it's my You're top six, yeah. are, are you um, in there? Are you coming through it? I don't think we're going up, okay. um, because our playoff record is just horrendous. I've had too much heartbreak and I don't want to... <laughs> You know, Wembley for me is, you know, unless it's against Scunthorpe United in the Johnson Plate Trophy, we've got no chance of winning, unfortunately. So for me, top two is going to be um, Burnley and Middlesbrough. Um, but then I do think Coventry will get in, I think, like you said, on form. But I think that goes down to the big man up top, whether he stays fit or not. Um, or if he I gets any injury. Completely different yeah. discussion yeah. altogether. Yeah. No, <laughs> it, it, I think it just depends if um, Victor, if he's fit or not. Um, but I think he will be and he'll be good. So I think commentary do get in. But I, out of all the teams we're talking about, I thought when Luton had played Blackburn, I think Blackburn have been the worst side. I'm going to lie. No, no, no. <laughs> so I've not seen this good track team. Come on. <laughs> no, I mean, with that, that's in our time when we was up and down, though, and I think. When you come to our place in a few weeks, I think that'll be a good Hopefully indication. I, see it. Well, I think that'll be a good indication of where we are because we've got Luton, Coventry, Millwall last game at season away from home, which could be a massive one. We've got Burnley left to come, so we've probably got nine games, five that are, we'd back ourselves in and we'd expect to win, and then four that are going to probably define where we actually end up, really. Then, especially the Luton and Millwall ones for me are going to be the ones that will decide if we're in there. Connor, you're a seasoned commentator on all this. What's your top six? <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't think Norwich will get in uh, from, from what I've seen this season. I, I think it's, it's too much of an ask and I, I don't also, I think sometimes you can have, 
you can go up and it not necessarily be a good thing. In the same way you can go down and it can be a great thing. I don't think it's, it would be a good thing for Norwich City in, in their current state to, to go up. The thing is, for, for all of the talk of who's going to break into the top six, Millwall and Luton have been absolutely relentless. So um, the ones I could see dropping out are probably probably Blackburn. Um, Coventry, I think, are, are a really interesting team, kind of timing a run at a really good point. I think West Brom still still absolutely have a shout. I wouldn't totally discount Watford either. Um, I'm really struggling to pick who I, who I think is going to come he's through not it. Said anyone there? <laughs> I think we've got um, down to twelve, haven't we? There? Yeah, I think I've said all of them, haven't I? Um, <laughs> Stoke are doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stoke are on a run, yeah. I'll, I'll conclude by saying I think if Middlesbrough are in it, I think they'll win it. Okay. And if not, I could, I could see one of these two guys coming through. Okay, hey, Mill. <laughs> don't trust us. Hey Jim. I got to say, I'll, I'll leave Don for the last one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, at the risk of upsetting our friend from Watford, pound for pound, Luton Town is the success story of English football. Of course it is. Uh, Where's fant- Amazon? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic success story. However, I've got some bad news <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I think Burnley and Borough will go up automatically. I think the playoffs will be Sheffield United, Luton, Millwall, and West Brom. In Carlos, we trust. Albion are going up <laughs> by the playoffs. Like it. Don, come the on. First I'll... one of the guys to back oh, themselves, exactly. isn't yeah. it? <laughs> He's like, yeah. you know, glutton for punishment. West Don, Brown. how many years have you done the playoffs? Yeah, plenty. Covering them. So yeah. uh, you... First one in 2007. So from your vantage point. Which you wouldn't have enjoyed. 2007 playoff against Derby. Um, I think the... Fo- the so if you t- who's getting in the top six? Well, the top four are definitely there. Um, down to Luton, obviously Middlesbrough, Sheffield United and Burnley. And then I had a quick look at Coventry because we were having a little look, Sam and I, and I hadn't realised they were nine unbeaten. And they've played some good teams. And that is also a story that will rival Luton Town, let me tell you, because I've watched Coventry's journey from League Two playing at Northampton Town's ground to League One playing at Birmingham City's ground every game away to where they are now, and it staggers me that he doesn't get mentioned when it, jobs come around in the championship, like six, at West Brom. Six games into the season, probably book his favourites for relegation. Releg- because because that, the conversation. Again, that's another bit of adversity because they the play all the games away from mm-hmm. home because of the pitch, etc. So there's a part of me, a small part of me, that loves that story because I like adversity. I like Luton. I even like Wigan story until this season. But prior to that, their fans had been through the mill. I love clubs where the fans have had it tough that come back and do well. It's great. Um, but that's an interesting one. So I'm going to back Coventry and that leaves me with one spot and I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't got a clue. What I will say about the top two is I think that's a big game for Sheffield United. <clears throat> I think if Middlesbrough end up in the playoffs, they win them. I think if Sheffield United end up in the playoffs, they don't. Um, and at that point, that then chucks it wide open. So I haven't given you a load there, but maybe just Enough, a, a little bit. And I tell you yeah. what as well, just to go back, because I asked you down for the, the first question of this was your top three, which is a bit unfair because I didn't ask you about your top six. So do Rovers get into that top six, but just miss out in the playoffs? Yeah, I think we get in. It depends who we get in that semi-final if we got there. I don't fancy playing Luton and Millwall. I think if we got... I, I fancy us to do something against Middlesbrough over two legs, but not the, not the teams where you've got to go and you fear going Kenilworth Road. You fear the Denny. I think it'll depend on who we play, but I think it'll be. Uh, I picked Middlesbrough to go second. Sheffield United, Luton, Millwall, and Rovers basically as it is now. I think you know Coventry will push up West Brom, but I think we might just hold on and just make it. Gents, this has been an absolute pleasure. We've got a lot of stuff sorted. There's still a lot of stuff that's open to what we see between now and the end of the season. You can leave as many comments as you want below this. This is all their debate. It's absolutely fine. I've been the chair. I've not given an opinion yet. And we're going to reconvene at the end of May and see who's right. Deal? Deal.